Um, yes, I think Turkey is geographically and strategically is, is, uh, you know, is blessed. We not, maybe we don't have oil and gas. And uh, for the past nine years, we have paid $270 billion for import of oil and gas. Uh, but we do have a very, uh, you know, uh, strategic, uh, you know, a, a very well uh, geographic position. I think Istanbul could easily be a global hub, logistic hub, because, um, you know, and, and that's why look at the growth in aviation uh, business. Istanbul used to have one tiny airport with one sort of runway. And over the last several years, as Turkey puts its house in order, traffic has gone up so dramatically that Ataturk Airport has simply uh, is now at the full capacity and it can no longer accept new traffic. In fact, my colleague from Qatar, finance minister, called me a few weeks ago and they've been after a few slots for Qatar Airways and literally it's, you know, it has been impossible to find a slot. So we now uh, we've expanded a second airport. When we took the office, that airport was only used for pilgrims to be sent to Saudi Arabia. For the rest of the year, animals were just breeding around. I mean, they were literally, I'm not just joking. And uh, today, we're building a second runway there, and it has gone from nowhere to almost 16 million passengers. And uh, we're now actually looking at building a huge airport, a third airport in Istanbul. So even that on its own tells you that that's already the case. That, but I do see actually Turkey not only in terms of passenger traffic, but also in terms of cargo traffic becoming a major logistics center. And that's why my government has been working hard on uh, transferring the operating rights of ports, because we know that the state is better regulating and supervising things rather than actually running and doing things. And that's why we believe that private sector can do a better job, and that's why we're working on that. That's why our airports, most of them are built and operated by private sector. And I think it's very important. And that's why we're building so much on infrastructure on, on, on roads, just to give you some color. Turkish Republic, you know, before we took the office in 79 years, had built 6,100 kilometers of multi-lane roads, you know, like motorways, dual carriage highways. But in the last nine, 10 years alone, meaning under AK Party government, we have built close to, you know, over 15,000 kilometers. So 15,000 kilometers in just nine years versus you know, 6,000 kilometers in uh, 79, 80 years. And it tells you how much, as I said, we believe in the story. And we also believe in the story that, that GCEL has. While the targets may seem very ambitious, I think we should, you know, our companies should make more use of digital platforms. That's why we have adopted a brand new commercial code, which will come into effect hopefully over the next year or so. And when it does come into effect, it, 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 it makes it compulsory for every company to have a website. I mean, we Turkish people, I mean, the median age is 29 years, and we love technology. And you can see that from internet penetration, from mobile telephone penetration, from the use of G3 networks, etc. I think Turkish companies has that awareness. But now, through that commercial code, we are actually making that a compulsory uh, sort of a requirement. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic, actually, that Turkey could make, you know, we may not have oil and gas, but I think we do have human capital stock, and we're improving the quality of it. 
and we're working uh, to continuously enhance investment climate, but also infrastructure for it. And that's why uh, I'm actually, uh, you know, always I tell my colleagues in Gulf states, in Arab nations, I say, okay, it's fine, I understand. Okay, you know, you can park some of your money in uh, fixed income instruments or equities and other stuff in, in the West, which is fine. But do focus on your immediate neighborhood. Look at, focus on real assets. Look at, all, I mean, focus on joint ventures so that we can enhance the welfare both here and in our region, contribute to stability, and hopefully, again, contribute to enhancing the standards of democracy. And I think this region uh, could benefit a lot from integrating more closely uh, through this type of digital as well as physical uh, infrastructure and platforms. We need to have railways extending all the way down to Gulf. We need to have motorways extending all the way to, you know, railways to China, motorways to China, and to the Gulf. This is not as ambitious as it used to be. It is doable. In fact, we're already building a rail link through uh, you know, uh, cars to, uh, you know, uh, Georgia, I mean, from Turkey to Georgia, and hopefully that will connect ultimately all the way to China. And I think the same applies to, uh, to multi-lane roads. So uh, why not revive the old Silk, Silk Road? 